Hi guys, welcome back to this new video. Uh, today I will talk to you about uh, the RBD remote, uh, mirroring into a Proxmox uh, cluster. Here we have two Proxmox clusters, a cluster A and a cluster B. And uh, within this, uh, this Proxmox cluster, I have uh, deployed self storage as a backend storage for the Proxmox cluster. Okay, so I did it uh, for the both uh, Proxmox cluster. And uh, regarding the network, I have uh, for a safe public network for those who are aware about the uh, self storage uh, architecture, we have uh, the, the self public network which has been configured on this particular uh, switch. Okay, and uh, we have also the self uh, cluster network for OSD rebalancing uh, data and uh, also for data replication. Okay, so the both network that have been configured and. Um, the Proxmox also is connected to, you know, to another, to a third uh, network, which is with me, which will be the management network. I will tell you what it is about. Okay, and we have also a management uh, node that I will use just to have access up to my self, uh, to my cluster, my both cl cluster. Okay, both uh, Proxmox cluster. Okay, so uh, and also the both cluster. Okay, through the self. With the data, data access uh, network or the self public network are being connected. Uh, okay, so the both clusters are connected. Okay, I can, I mean, the self cluster are, uh, are, are both connected to a router that has been configured specially for, for that. Okay, so uh, for this test, in purpose, so I will uh, show you in, uh, in my lab environment. Okay, this the both cluster. And uh, I have already created uh, one VM or instance in this first cluster, okay. And I already I already configured the RBD mirroring on the for the database application. So this uh, RBD mirroring is already running, and uh, I will perform today the test. Just so I will shut down this cluster. I will shut down this whole cluster, and uh, and we will see how I can be able to retrieve for this uh, VM. That has been previously uh, created here. This vision will be able to uh, start me up of here. Okay, so I will show you the, the procedure. So thank you very much. Let me go ahead. Let's go to the lab environment. Okay, so here I have my both, both cluster. Where this one, you can see the S1 Prosmox or zero one, which will first node of my uh, yeah, of my cluster. Okay, this one is the first of uh, Prosmo cluster, and the second uh, Prosmo cluster, as you can see here, can do here S2 Prosmo 01. Okay, so this is the second uh, Prosmo cluster. Great, so how you can see here also, I have, uh, I have one VM, okay, which has been created in this uh, uh, first cluster. And now let me show you the information about the replication and so on. So let me show you. I will come in here in my first cluster and uh, I will show you some information about uh, uh, the Right now, in this RBD, uh, in this pool, I have many pools in my. In, I have only one pool for the data at the moment configured in both uh, cluster. So let me show you the state of my self storage at the moment. The status now it is uh, the is we uh, have is okay on both cluster right now. On this second cluster also, we have is okay, and uh, just so far we don't have to show many that. You can view uh, uh, there is only one pulse okay configure right now and i don't need to do so much work here but because i just i just want to show you the rbd mirroring, mirroring how it's work in Prosmo cluster okay so the purpose is not to take long times in the self storage part okay so let me come back but before proceed let me uh, i will show you also the content uh here this 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 disk okay on my first uh, cluster, okay. This this uh, this disk or uh, this uh, yes this uh, this disk that attached to the VMs has been replicated to the second uh, 
step, uh, to the second, second cross more cluster. So let me show you. At the moment, I have is 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 mirroring mirrored from the this first uh, first first uh, cluster to the second one. Okay, let me show the same information for the second first more cluster. Remember, so mirroring primary is false, okay? And uh, the journal has been activated is because the journal has been activated is after the replication is ongoing, okay? This particular feature, once the RBD mirroring has been activated on the whole pool, okay? And manually at each time, if you want to uh, activate it, the, the RBD mirroring on a specific image, you have to enable this feature. Okay, and the replication will be done. Okay, so so far so good. Let's go. So let's suppose that my first cluster for a an issue, my first cluster is down. Okay, so here, let's suppose that if the cluster is down, and how how you will be able to restore the data? Okay, so I will simulate a visa shutdown of my cluster down. Let me simulate it. I am on KVM environment right now. Okay, so the first cluster, the first cluster, proton cluster are there, and the second one are there. Okay, so let me shut down the first cluster, proton cluster. You can view here, I will shut down this one. Okay, this cluster, proton cluster will be shut down right now. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, great. Okay, so right now let me see if I still have access to my cluster or not. Yeah, something goes wrong. Incident issues, calling, uh, help desk, uh, what's happened to my application, and so on. So every person gets uh, are in trouble right now uh, because the site one is on uh, is can say maybe maybe something's wrong in our first cluster, and uh, for the instant manager. And whatever you can call him, you can say that you can receive the application on, on our DRP site so, or our uh, callbacks uh, site. Okay, so when you come here, you can view that in my uh, special pool here. I have the disk that has been replicated on my second cluster. Okay, this means that of the data are there. Okay, at the moment, at uh, this present moment, the old data has been replicated in my uh, second uh, site. Okay, so the question is, how can I uh, now, how the replication has been done successfully, I can, how can I uh, start again uh, my application, my virtual, virtual machine and so on? The procedure is very quite, uh, is quite uh, documented and documented and uh, very simple. Let me do it uh, and show it to, to you. Okay. So the first thing that we have to do, let me go back here, as you can get, so here, I can still have access to my cluster, and for the next second one, I don't have access, okay, so, because it's shut down right now. So here, what I have to do, okay, let me call, let me uh, check the status of it, it's still in primary, and uh, primary is false, okay, so I will, I will perform over what I can say, I will uh, I will force this uh, uh, second cluster to take the hand on this uh, particular image because at the moment no one can write uh, on this uh, particular image. No one can uh, in this cluster. No one can uh, write uh, data in this particular image. So I have to promote this second uh, cluster to be. Uh, to have a heavy hand on this particular this this or, or particular image, okay. So let's do that through this command. This command, the mirror image promote, okay, we pull and of the particular image where we want to take the hand on it and be able to write data on it, okay. So I will force it right now, okay. So once I've done that, I've done that, okay. 
see that uh, the mirror, mirroring uh, primary stages becomes true. Okay. Next steps. Next step. What I have to do, I can I have to go back on my cluster and I create a, a I create uh, a new virtual machine with, without any bootable uh, operating system. Okay. So I will do it right now. I have many ways to retrieve your data or starting with uh, VM. So I, I will show you one one use case. Okay. We have another use case, but in this video, I will show you just one use case. Okay. So this use case is this one. I will create a new virtual machine. Uh, yes, uh, let's see. Uh, mm. Let me say it's calling S1 as RV. Okay, well, uh, zero one for instance, it's up to me. Okay, and uh, next step, sorry for the bad on road noise. For the ISO, no ISO image, no bootable uh, drive, and so on. Okay, yes. Uh, now, the, right now, you can see that I have, uh, but I can let me simulate some things like that. Uh, voilà, yeah, okay. Do not use any media, okay, right now, and let's move on and uh, go move on again. Regarding the disk, uh, I will. Mean, I don't need all of those information, so not, nothing bad. So don't worry about that. Okay, and uh, next. Okay, next. Mm, yeah. Stop after creating. No, don't uh, select this one. It's finished. Okay, and uh, once done, once done, right now I will go the virtual, the virtual machine I just created. Okay, with no bootable uh, disk on it. So now I will go back uh, here. The ID of the disk is this one, and I will I will attach the disk to this particular machine. Okay. Mm, yeah, I will attach all the disk. My uh, backend disk to this particular machine, okay, because I have the ID of the disk of the VM created. Here the ID is uh, 100, okay, and I will attach over with my uh, your, my uh, my disk that I would like to where I have my data on it, okay. Okay, so once done, next steps, I will uh, go to the I, I could now start on my uh, my uh, instance, okay, or my my virtual machine. So to, to do that, we go to VMs, okay, and uh, from there, I will go to the boot order. Mm. Yeah, uh, boot order. Where are you? Yeah, okay, here, okay, I will edit the uh, boot order. And from there, I will just say, I will uh, and check this one and this one, and we will have to, to boot on this uh, disk particular, okay? You say, okay. And uh, I can also separate so, some information that I don't need. Our, I can see this uh, local disk, I can remove it at the moment if I want, but it's up to you. Let me remove this uh, disk zero. Yeah. Now let's start our instance and see what will happen. Um, 
it will it will start yeah so congratulations your virtual machine is uh going okay which means that uh, everything is okay so let's see uh let's let our virtual machine now start it up okay yeah gorgeous like i'm looking on this um, great 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 excellent okay so congratulations this is your how how we can uh, uh memo uh can, you can uh, replicate data across or uh, to Prosma cluster in case of uh, issues or in case of any, any trouble that you can have in your in your Prosma clusters okay so this scenario it is uh, one use cases okay you can have many you can have many use cases where you can retrieve data on your uh, cluster b okay it's very uh we have, we have a, many use cases it's up to you it's up to it's up to your configuration right now it's and uh, if you you would like to implement this one in your environment okay you can just contact us and uh, let me uh, let us know and uh, we'll be very in interested and uh, proud to help you to configure your environment to be able to replicate that across all your your clusters okay so thank you very much and i'll see you and let me show you we have also another scenario this scenario also it's possible also to have a dedicated uh, network for data replication because right now what i did what you did use of the same data for the data access it is very within this uh, within this uh, same um, network that we use or uh, you perform your application in another scenario we can have a, a dedicated uh, network where replication has been done have been uh, done for self okay so thank you very much see you for the next uh, lecture okay and uh, have a good day bye for now